Welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 2008 home invasion movie, Martyrs. This is a French horror movie by director Pascal Logier. Logier? Oh, uh, it's like one of the most famous graphic horror movies of all time. I haven't gotten around to watching it. Uh, I, I was into French New Extremity back when I was younger, but I don't know. Yeah, it's like a thing. It's a, it's a big torture movie. Uh, I'm not exactly excited to watch it, but I figured I'd scratch it off the list. So yeah, I guess let's watch Martyrs. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Shaky 2000s camera. Girls caring for girls, you love to see it. Music by Seppuku Paradigm. <laughs> One good thing about kids is they're just so convincing. They're really good for horror movies. <laughs> Off to a great start. And this is going to go in the direction that you assume it will. Old enough to know what your parents did. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in to see if the movie kind of explores this. Who knows if it, like, it, it it's a horror movie, it may not, the level to which it may, be in, may or may not be insightful as to the themes it um, brings up. It's hard to tell, but a question of whether or not um, uh, survivors of trauma are... Um, Man, she, she did the squib shot and everything. Uh, but whether or not survivors of trauma um, are, are able to rehabilitate or if they will carry on that trauma and manifest it in um, negative ways. Not to say that everybody who's experienced trauma is going to turn out to be a murderer or whatever. Um, but that... Um... Uh, a question of whether or not... Uh, some things can be moved beyond or be recovered from. She made a blood pact. Something to put the demons away. Hmm. But even this... Won't do it. It's an interesting kind of construction early on in this movie because it actually lends itself to a lot of different kind of arrays of possibilities. Um, there's a, it's it's constrained to the horror genre certainly, but there's different subgenres within it that you're kind of mulling your head over to see how it will resolve itself. If it's a question of demonic possession, because the the movie is named Martyrs, so you wonder if there's like a religious aspect to it. Um, you wonder if uh, Lucy's been uh, possessed by a demon, or if she is suffering from mental illness, and the um, the way the story eventually resolves itself is something very, very different, actually. It's more in, in line with uh, stuff, uh, I guess, like from around this time, like Hostel, this is 2007. It actually turns out to be a giant conspiracy. Nice use of cuts there. Very French New Extremity wavy. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting the kind of like uh, road this this is like leading you down towards you as an audience, like what you're anticipating uh this how this movie will play out like you think that um 
Lucy's being possessed and that Anne is going to eventually have to uh, kill her or, you know, try and exercise her, but um, perhaps have to end her life and end her suffering before she, like, kills again or she goes too far. Whether or not she'll be able to do that or whether her, she, she loves Lucy too much. J'ai plus de cartouches. Tu prends ça. Pourquoi on s'en va pas Viens, on va revenir. C'est ça. On m'en fout, je te dis. And so those those marks on her back make you think that they they're they're actually um there is actually a demon. It's a cool shot. I think this movie specifically more so than almost any other, um, perhaps. Um, inside as well um, this movie makes you think specifically about um, the role that women play in uh, horror films especially in um, horror films that uh, focus on torture and about bot uh, and on uh, and focus on like um, bodily pain Things I do for love. Oh, I see. She was unconscious that entire time. I was gonna say, there's no way that she like pretended to be uh, dead for that entire time. Yeah, it's a rough film, I have to say. Uh, from like a gore perspective, it isn't going too harsh right now, but uh, in terms of just harsh vibes, it's got harsh vibes. Put in a really tough spot of uh, deeply caring about a person and perhaps them exhibiting um, destructive or self-destructive traits. The possibility that your best friend, that your loved one, that, your, that the love of your life has been so possessed by trauma that the only way that they can cope with it is to, is to hurt and harm other people. It's a, it's a despairing kind of sentiment. And even perhaps more depressing than that, the idea that they'll never recover from it. Something you've worked your whole life towards, of trying to rehabilitate them, that perhaps it's useless. And again, the kind of a, a obsessive compulsive action, the uh, rubbing of her knees. And so this is the woman that she's been seeing. That has been trying to kill her. It's not my foot. It's the one that she left behind. I really like the uh, uh, cross cutting of her as a child and her as an adult with the kind of flashing of the lights. I actually think that the first half of this movie is really, really challenging. I, I do like uh, you know the answer that it poses, but I think the question is actually really compelling if it goes down a different direction. If it is about trying to, um, if it is a question of what sort of care or what sort of devotion do you owe to a person who is um, so mentally ill that um, they can never be rehabilitated Yeah, it's not specifically as gory as I expected it to be, but it is, like, really, really depressing circumstances. I'll give that to it. It's actually a very different movie from how I imagined it would be.
Um, I, I kind of have an idea of what the second half is going to be like, but it's not so much... Um, it's not so much that it's like a, a gore movie. Like, it's not that it's like technically showing off a lot of shit, but that it's... Um, it's, it's really uh, developed into... It, it's, its story is really fucking sad. The kind of a, a horror and anxiety that that comes with, um, that kind of caretaker role and that kind of fear that uh, your loved one is slipping away from you. Yeah, and so she, she, despite killing them all, she can't get this demon out of her head. She can't get the guilt or the trauma out of her head. Horror is such a great genre for using contortion artists. So the demon that she's been running from this entire time. <sighs> is despair. In the end, she was fighting for as long as she could. Against the... to want to kill herself. Can't do anything for her, she's already dead. She's already slipped all the way down her arms. I'm actually amazed she actually managed to get mobility on her arms, considering the fact that she cut them open. Or maybe that was just an illusion. Ooh. It's a really sad movie. I'm actually like... This, it's, it isn't turning out the way that I expected. Uh, I kind of knew that the movie would have like um, a two-parter format to it, but I actually think it works to its strength. I think it, it gets to explore two very, very different movie, two very different themes that end up complementing each other as the movie progresses, that, or that eventually kind of circles around to itself and uh, the two halves kind of complement each other. I, I'm surprised by how kind of moving the first half is. You run the danger of a horror movie um, with the first half being just set up and everything being culminating in the second half, all the good stuff being in the second half. And from what I've seen of what pe the way people talk about this movie, people usually concentrate on the second half. But I think um, conceptually, the first half has a lot of really great ideas in terms of how the first half conceives what the pain of trauma is and what the pain of living with trauma is and what the pain of uh, trying of loving somebody with trauma is. And the second half will take a very different stance on what trauma is. It's a parasite! Same setup too, with the uh, modern architecture household. I kind of applaud this film. I talked about this a little for a sweet movie, that um, horror movies can't really reach the fever and the kind of impossibility of horror that the real world presents. And so um, while they can't match the scale or the mundanity of real life horror, they try and um, provide something comparable and perhaps something cathartic. and. Um, in an excessive or um, bombastic display of horror. So in that regard, I kind of applaud movies like Martyrs or like um, or like Salo, I guess, or or Hostel even that uh, try and present as like gross and sensational a depiction as ho of horror as possible, if in some small way to present some sort of form of catharsis in it because the real world will not give you a catharsis for the horrors that you endure. There's no justification.
Yeah, and so the torture's been real this entire time. Her hands are surprisingly uh, well maintained, despite all of it. In this instance, I, I might call an ambulance. But she's got that same instinct um, that had her take care of Lucy, and she's kind of projected it onto this woman now. Oh, oh, yeah, those are driven in. Oh, Jesus. Oh. That's a lot. I don't know if this is necessarily the most sanitary way to handle this, but, you know, she's doing her best. You always imagine these kind of movies be longer than they actually are. Ça fait des heures qu'on essaie de joindre les belles fonds. Ça sonne occupé. Le téléphone n'était pas raccroché. Ça devrait pas arriver. Qu'est-ce que tu fous là, toi And that's the kind of greatest kind of degradation to have her buried with the people who tortured her. That does suck. The uh, son didn't shit himself after he died. Good for him. I wonder if this would come out in 2022 or 2020 that uh, if this uh, this woman, this um, black ops woman, would have like a Lady Dimitrescu kind of following to her. The world is so fait that there are no more victims. And martyrs are very rare. Martyrs, that's another thing. Un martyr est un être exceptionnel, mademoiselle. Il survit à la souffrance, il survit à la privation de tout. Okay, so this is bringing up an interesting idea. I, I don't know where Martyrs actually eventually lands on this, or if it lands there successfully, but Martyrs is stating, at least um, in the eyes of the villain, there is a, a split between um, a victim and a martyr. And I guess the question we're going to ask is, eventually, is Anna and are women in this film depicted as victims? or as martyrs, are they suffering in this film, or are they reaching a state of elevated existence? Are they surviving? Sorry, that's, that's the word that she used. So this is the particular statement that this movie is making, that it's particularly fixated on women as the recipients of this um, extreme experience. Whether or not they are the victim in extremis or the survivalist in the, or, or the survivor in extremis. It asks the question whether or not um, we watch women in horror movies to watch them be victimized or to watch them be uh, or to watch them survive. And I think the ultimately the answer that the movie wants us to believe it possesses is to watch them survive. Uh, we'll see if like the movie seems in alignment with this answer, but um, overall, I don't know if that's exactly the case. Oh, it's the same pea soup. We're gonna feed you Dijon mustard and you're gonna suffer. You're gonna get such fucking acid reflux. The working out the uh, the choreo for this seems like it'd be so. Uh, I don't know. I, I'd be nervous about it just because of the metal spoon aspect to it. Because like she's gonna flail and stuff, but she has to remain absolutely still by the time the, the spoon comes towards her mouth. Um, I'm sure it's not like an actual metal spoon, or if it is, it doesn't actually have that much weight or um, heft to it. But I'd be nervous knocking around the actress's lips with a metal spoon, making sure she doesn't gag when I when I insert it into her mouth. They never get oily in these things. Somehow managed to maintain a pretty matte face. I once spent three days in a uh, uh, a hospital emergency room, and my face got oily by the end of that. <laughs> the hand on his arm. Taste a charm around your neck, strung out and thin. 
cars and friends trying to catch some shag. Even the If I were in honest shoes, I would simply not get caught. I actually, for like a viewer who might think like this isn't like uh, reaching the highs that it had before, that it's not um, as assertive, just showing her being beaten multiple times and being force fed. Um, I kind of agree, but I think it's trying to layer its modes of attack a bit that um, it's withholding that stuff and trying to be like more on the side of relenting uh, or uh, unrelenting. And it's like kind of establishing a tempo that we've already seen so much shock and stuff that if we keep on trying to escalate and show shock upon shock upon shock and make it worse and worse and worse, um, the audience isn't gonna have enough time to like breathe or process stuff. And so it's trying to keep this part as kind of even or trying to create an effect through longevity as opposed to through shock so that when the next a wave of shock comes, it'll be that much more kind of excessive, reflecting a certain kind of like outlook or a certain kind of pace that isn't just we need to beat you overhead with these things over and over and over. <laughs> I actually really like this sentiment. I think it's beautiful in a horrible movie, in a horrid movie. Um, that this is it's hard because it's like uh, denigrating the other victims and stuff, but just in the specific story that it's telling, true to Anna's psychology and Anna's worldview, that she's able to endure these tortures. Um, it's actually pretty sad. It's pretty sentimental that she's able to endure all this because of uh, love. Because she has such a strong love and a such, such a strong um, willingness and kind of suppliance towards uh, Lucy that it carries her through this process. I think in another way you could imagine it that she um, that this torture process is bringing her closer to Lucy having her kind of identify Lucy's pain and Lucy's tor um, trauma like her understanding Lucy in the way that a person might understand Christ in moments of suffering and while I don't totally prescribe to that idea I think it is um, I think this outlook on a Anna that she is uh, carried through this process by love is it's it's an interesting look And it is like this little kernel of, for me, beauty in this movie that's very kind of horrible. I think it transforms the message in a way that it's not about that women are survivors, that they can endure suffering more so than anyone else. It's that, that Anna specifically in this instance, for me, the way I read this, is in possession of enough love that it carries her through this um, through this process. And this is like a very dark movie, but um, honestly, like, I think that's like, that's a sentiment that's in a lot of movies and not quite many movies kind of reach that pitch that this movie's reaching, that through the kind of suffering that we endure in life, that the thing that can hold us steady or that can help us endure through it is uh, is love it's really sad that it's being expressed through so much human degradation but all movies kind of like tell this story. She's still she's in her armpit hair shape. Good for her. Um, all, all movies kind of express this story of like enduring degradation through the revelation of love. I 
I love how so many French movies, in one way or another, like end up referencing um, Les Is from Visage. French people, they love Franju. I don't even know how. I really don't think I know how. How 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 are they cutting off the skin around the toes and not getting the toenails off? The old family's replaced with a new family. That's disgusting. There's some sort of symbolism in that. They're they're actually the the cogs in the machine. They're the people that are easily disposable and replaceable. And it's the it's the martyrs who are actually the individuals who are in the most possession of their identity. How long is this girl's neck? <laughs> Ladies, if you want to extend your neckline, I guess get a bob or a shorter haircut. Sink with me, save for the year. Blah blah blah, old consuming the young. Blah blah blah, Macron. <laughs> blah blah blah, uh, French politics. Blah blah blah. Et la première, oui mes amis, la première à avoir rapporté ce qu'elle a vu. Ce témoignage, mes chers amis, sera partagé dans un instant. It's always, you know, the um, whatever cult. Conspiracy, the like Illuminati group, always turns out to be smaller than you really would expect it to be. The failings of like a smaller, of a lower budget movie, I guess. Sauriez-vous imaginer ce qu'il y a après la mort? Ça va, mademoiselle? Doutez, Étienne. I wonder if that's accurate. So, like, what happened to her breast fat at the end? Um, I have a lot of thoughts. A lot, a lot of stuff I want to kind of mull over. Um, I think the second half is definitely the sell for this movie, and it's why it's so, like, well-known, and it's why it's so controversial. It's, like, edgy and conceptual, and it's, it presents a really different look from what the first half is suggesting, and... It's kind of the the second half of this movie is what kind of wrote it into uh, immortality. Uh, Xavier Dolan was in this. I had no idea. Xavier Dolan. Who was he in this? He was the teenager. I had no idea that was Xavier Dolan. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's that's good in terms of why this movie got made or why it appeals to people. I think people really like the ideas that are posed in the second half of the movie. At, um, I think perhaps getting far enough away from it. Um, I don't know. I I I do get the appeal of the second half of the movie, and it poses a really interesting question of like, uh, if you suffer enough, what do you see on the other side, and 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 all of that. I do like it. I think for me, uh, at this point of my life, I actually related more to the first half, and I felt more emotionally resonant with the first half. The idea of trying to care for and love somebody who is so kind of perpetually hurt and in such perpetual pain that their their consciousness that um, is a, a threat to themselves and to others, I think that's a really sad, really wrenching story. And uh, I, 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 I found it like... Yeah, I found it really dramatically uh, challenging to see how far Anna would be willing to go for Lucy if she knew that Lucy's condition was uh, terminal or destructive or, you know, poses imminent threat to others. The second half I've known about for a long time, and it was cool to watch it in real time. I wasn't taken in, into as much like horror flight as I would have um, if I'd come into this blind, but um, having known about the the ending to this for such a long time, I actually really um, felt a lot more the kind of depth of relationship she had with Lucy and how um, her love for Lucy carried her through the second half of the movie. And so I thought that was really, um, I, I found that really resonant. I really like that aspect to it. I get that's not what everybody likes about this movie. Um, people want to see, people want to see a martyrdom. People want to see a girl get flayed. I get that. Yeah, in terms of its messaging, uh, I, I don't know. I 
I, I, I don't know where to fall on it because I think it is trying to express an idea that uh, that it's women, maybe not women in all horror movies, but the women within the scope of this horror movie are survivors and that they're uh, the kernel of their kind of humanity is retained throughout the story and they are not victims. They are not um, something that we watch to um, to see them suffer. We're, we're watching them to see them triumph. Um, I don't think it fully reaches that message, but I think it is trying in earnest to express it i think uh, like the second half is so like edgelordy and dark and like really makes you think that it, it kind of dulls that message a little bit but I, I understand that this movie is trying to play around with very many different attitudes and messages and appeals to different audiences and sometimes they just don't totally uh they don't totally complement each other I do want to say, though, as like a meta narrative, uh, this being a commentary on how we watch women in horror movies and whether or not we need to identify with them as victims or as uh, survivors or saviors. I don't think that we watch horror movies to watch women survive. I think we watch them to watch uh, women suffer. But I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with watching a movie to watch a character suffer if there is at least like a degree of um, empathy that's elicited in that. That's just the way I watch movies. So if you're watching a character suffer through a lot in a movie, that can be a cathartic experience for you, even if it's not the same kind of suffering that you suffer, um, even if it's something that's really sensationalized, really brutal, really outside of your wheelhouse, uh, watching that process of suffering can be a cathartic experience, even if they don't survive in the end, and in a small way can be an emotional solve for uh, people living through horrors or living through trauma or living through uh, the kind of dull ache of human life. Uh, like, I, I think the the feeling be uh, one gets from watching a horror movie is in a way, at least within the same ballpark as what a person feels watching like a Bresson movie, that you're identifying with a sor sort of horror, you're acknowledging it and... The catharsis may or may not be there, or the um the the revelation, the the salvation may or not may or may not be there, but the catharsis, the identification, is there. Where it runs aground a bit in the wider scope of the horror genre is that it's ascribed to feminine, femininity, and it's become it's been reinforced so many times over that it's like this is something that's supposed to happen to women and that gets troublesome so i i don't think that's a good thing but i think as long as there's a degree of identification within it as long as the audience puts themselves in the perspective of the person who's suffering i don't really see a problem with that uh yeah that was Martyrs. I, I'm, I'm a bit mixed bag about it. The things that were emotional about it were much more emotional than I was expecting it to be. The things that were horrific and brutal and grotesque turned out less than I was afraid that they would be. Like, if you're a person who could stand horror movies, I think you could stand watching Martyrs if you've been afraid to watch it. I think it's perfectly fine. And yeah, transformational, game-changing horror movie. A really good utilization of the kind of first act and second act narrative structure really kind of uh, a landmark for French New Extremity and something that really brought it to the international stage uh, yeah that was Martyrs give it a watch I don't know let me know what you think let me know why you think that she's named Mademoiselle I'm sure it's because the the cabal have an obsession with youth uh, or whatever let me know if you've seen any other French Extremity movies uh, stuff that you think would be interesting to check out I guess. And yeah. I deserve a like after this. Leave a like. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time. Keep watching good movies.